Hey everybody, welcome back to Peachy Disc Golf today. I am going to be unboxing the fourth quarter 2023 Prodigy subscription box. We're gonna see what discs are inside and then we're gonna head out to a course and play around using them. Let's see what's in the box. Subscription box here. So Prodigy has a quarterly subscription box where once a quarter, they're gonna send you out some discs, some clothing as well. The only other box I've gotten so far this year has been the third quarter box last quarter. And I got this really cool Prodigy hat, this active wear Prodigy t-shirt, which I really like. So I expect there's some more clothes in this box here as well. But obviously the main feature is going to be some sweet discs. I actually did a video with last quarter's box. Definitely be sure to check it out if you haven't yet in the corner here. So definitely check it out. We had some pretty sweet discs in it. So there was like a, a Manabu Kojima uh, PA2, which was really cool. I really liked that disc. And my favorite disc in that group was this team stamped, as of right now, still unnamed and unreleased mid-range. This was like a nice, dependable, overstable mid-range. Not as overstable as like the MX-1, but maybe just a tick more overstable than say the Archive. So this was a really cool disc. And I believe this quarter's box has like an unreleased fairway driver. So that'll be interesting to try out. So what's in the box? Let's open it up and take a look. As you can see, I've already cut it open, but I haven't taken a look at what's inside yet. So let's see. Discs will be in this black box. Let's see if we have any clothing. Oh, got a Prodigy drawstring bag. Pretty cool. Same like green tone that they've been going with. And there is a shirt. Oh, long sleeve. Oh, with the hook. This is cool. Look at this. There's a long sleeve like hoodie, but it's not like a jacket. It's not super thick. This actually might be really nice to wear the course. I'm actually going to pop this on right now real quick. All right, check it out. This thing feels amazing. It's like so thin. I actually don't have that many long sleeve shirts, so I'm really excited about this. Check it out. We got the cool uh, Prodigy 10 year logo. Pretty awesome, honestly. It feels great, nice and comfortable. But let's get into the main event here. Obviously, the thing I'm looking forward to the most are the discs that we're getting. There is a little cheat sheet that comes with it as well. So let's take a look at what we got. I sort of lightly touched on this before, but these Prodigy subscription boxes have these sweet, like, magnetic boxes. They are so cool. Let's open it up. Oh, check it out, guys. Christmas wrapping. Look at that. Pretty cool. Christmas came early, it's November. I see some stickers. Got a couple stickers here. And then uh, this Isaac Robinson patch. Pretty sweet. Definitely gonna be putting some of these stickers on my water bottle. All right, let's unwrap the discs here. Oh man, look at this beautiful stack of plastic here. All right, let me get my cheat sheet. First disc in the lineup. Really cool 500 plastic P model OS. Overstable throwing putter. I haven't really had much experience with any of the discs in the Prodigy Ace line. I know Kang uses the M model US, I believe. He never uses it in tournaments, but he's aced twice with it, I think. So P model OS, kind of deep in my hands. Here you go, broader side profile. Pretty comfortable in the hand, actually. And 500 plastic feels great. Really cool. They call this like the Meccano stamp. Really cool stamp. Check this out. They call this the Crystal Ball A5 in 400 crystal plastic. Look how clear that is. If I put myself here, it might focus on my face rather than the disc. A5, probably my favorite approach disc right now. I'm bagging a 300 plastic A5. This feels great in the hand. I'm just worried that I'm gonna throw this in the fall here. It's gonna get lost under some leaves. It is so clear. That's so crazy looking. <laughs> here we go. This is a sick color and stamp. We got a 500 Spectrum X3. Sometimes I will bag an X3, but it's an Air Spectrum plastic. It's like 161 grams, super lightweight. And it flies pretty similar to my Wave. I'll actually get it a nice little flip up, carry a long way before having a nice dependable fade. This is just an 500 Spectrum plastic, 173 grams here, max weight. It looks sick. Look at this. It's like, I think they call this like the Gothic edition with the like old timey font. Looks pretty cool. Feels great in the hand. 
I'm gonna give it a toss, but I imagine this is just gonna be an absolute beefcake for me because for my arm speed, in order to take like a 12 speed disc like this, it needs to be super, super light in order for me to get any sort of decent flight out of it. But I am looking forward to trying this one out. Okay, here we go. This is a sick little disc right here. The Prodigy Archive Isaac Robinson's disc. This is in the Test Flight Plastic. In last quarter's box, they gave us a Test Flight FX4. And here we go, similar stamp and similar plastic, but this time with the Archive. The Archive is a disc that has since come out of the bag. I've decided to sort of stick with my Matrix as my overstable midrange. I found that the Archive just is a little bit straighter than what I wanted. It does have some good stability to it though, but this Testron 400 Glimmer plastic feels really good it's got a nice tackiness to the, the plastic really grippy honestly i'm gonna throw this and i bet i'm gonna fall in love with it and really debate on if i want to put the archive back in the bag or not and the last disc in the box here is a prototype as of right now unreleased 400 plastic here looking at the profile it's kind of domey let's take a look can you see that it's kind of domey it looks like it might be on the more understable side, I actually don't know like what speed this is. I wanna say like nine, eight, nine speed. I don't think the rim is narrow enough to be a, like a six or a seven speed. Feels great in the hand. Plastic, 400 plastic feels amazing. I'm excited to test this out. It sort of looks like both an FX3 and an FX4. So could be anything. Really excited to try this out, but we're gonna go hit the course, test these discs out see how they fly. All right, so we're gonna be playing the front nine here at Alexander Park using the disc from that Prodigy Mystery Box. It's a little bit chilly. So this new hoodie that came with the box, coming in clutch. Hole one is 245 feet, it's a par three. Basket is straight ahead off to the right side here. So that big tree shouldn't come into play too much. We're gonna be trying out the new unnamed fairway driver right now. So I looked at the rim size and held it in my hand. I thought this was like a nine speed rim, but it's actually, not quite as wide as say like their FX3, FX4 or anything. It's closer to this F3 that I have, which is listed as an eight speed. I also have the F5 with me as well. We're gonna see, I think I think this disc might slot into their F line, not their FX line then. We'll see how they, how they compare, but we'll start off with this new fairway here. Bit breezy. Ooh, it's stable. Nice. We're up into circle one, they're a little short. Let's compare that to the uh, the F3 and the F5 here. Uh, so the F3 should be pretty neutral. It's a 8.5, negative two, two. F5, they have not renumbered yet, so I don't know if these numbers are gonna stay, but as of right now, it's a 7.5, negative two, one. I will say the rim of the F5 is a little bit less wide than the F3, so this could be a, a true seven speed. This one should be more understable because the Prodigy naming scheme is like, the lower the number, the more overstable. So this should be more overstable than this. Oh, that's much straighter. Had a little more turn out of that. I think I landed on top of the disc. <laughs> it rolled up right to the uh, the wall there. So it seems like that new fairway is more overstable even than the F3. So this F5 should carry even straighter. Yeah. That should be a solid throw. Yep, very similar. Honestly, for my arm speed, they're, they're not too dissimilar. I threw that F5 pretty weakly though. The prototype was the shortest of the group. First throw of the day though, you know, that's how it always goes. We are still in circle one here. So, but I initially think that this prototype is a little more overstable, similar to like a T-Bird. I don't actually think Prodigy has like a T-Bird disc right now. Going with my normal uh, PA3s here. I could putt with that P-Bottle OS they gave me, but I'm tired of doing challenges where I have to putt with premium plastic. Nope. First putt of the day, you know, always bad, always bad. Let's go knock it out. Oh, now it's a headwind. It's all good. Hole two is 254 feet. It's a par three. Basket off to the right side of that grove of trees. They do have a pin position that's like just behind that grove of trees. I really like that one. This one's a little bit more open. It plays a little downhill, so I might be able to make it there with the archive, but well, we're already fresh off the drivers. Let's try these again. Same order. I threw that way wide, but it's overstable. Pin high, circle's edge there. All right, we'll try the F3. I'll go a little more direct. 
Yeah, that had a little more flip. That's gonna be perfect. Yep, right next to the pin. F3 is definitely less overstable. F5. Yeah, laser beam. All pretty solid shots. The F3, the F5 parked. Left a lot of meat on the bone here though, with the, uh, what I'm gonna call the F2. Yeah, that's what we're gonna go with for now. Circle's edge putt here into a headwind. Oh, close. Easy par. Hole three, only 166 feet par three. Basket right there. Gotta get on the birdie train here, something this short. We're gonna go with the crystal ball A5 here. I really hope you can see this disc when I throw it because it is so crystal clear. Hopefully it shows up on camera. Just going straight at it. I'm also gonna try out the P model OS here as well. Go in. Oh, a little long. That was very close, a real ace run right there. That was beautiful. Man, I love the A5 so much. Try the P model OS here. Oh, really soft. Great flight. Still parked. <laughs> nice, that was solid. How does that compare to the PX3? Yeah, very similar flights. That PX3 is right under the basket. The A5 just a little long, but still a tap and putt here for birdie. No problem. And then PX3, a little tap in, easy. No problem there either. And the P Model OS, also tap in, similar distance to the uh, A5. This is why I bag an A5 and not this one. Hole four, 189 feet par three. The basket is straight ahead just to the right behind a big tree out there. The biggest thing you gotta do is make it through this narrow tunnel and out into the open field there. I would throw something under stable here. It would be the ideal throw like my peach or something, but I don't have anything under stable. Everything is pretty, pretty decently over stable here. So we're gonna go with the archive, try to put a little bit of turnover I had the archive in the bag for a little while. I really liked it. I like the way it feels. It does have nice glide and good overstability. I switched it out though for my matrix, which is a little bit more overstable. I find that the archive has a very similar flight to the Rock 3. And I did some videos recently with the Rock 3 where I can get some nice turnovers out of it if you put enough Anheuser. So we'll see. If I even make it out of the gap, that'll be solid. Let's go. Circle's edge putt there. Pretty versatile disc. Like I put a good bit of Anheuser on that, but it held the whole way. Oh, the headwind. Oh, that was close. Hole five, 150 feet, par three. Basket is into the woods here, off to the left. Just gotta make it through this initial gap here. We're gonna go with the A5. Throw it nice and flat down the middle. It'll fade back. I might throw the P model OS as well just to try it out again. Let's go A5 first. That's, again, the disc I would probably throw here. Actually, no, I wouldn't. I would probably just throw my PA3 here. So because of that, we'll start with the, the P model OS. All right, not bad. I should have probably thrown the A5. Oh, nope, two inside. Didn't throw it wide enough. I had better distance though, I think. All right, P-Model OS. Got me up here for a tap in for birdie. Then uh, A5, not too bad. Still, if I would have thrown it on that same line I did the P-Model OS, this would have been a little further up. Would I have gotten a birdie anyway? Let's see. Oh, we're a little righty there. That's all right. Player A, let's go. Hole six, 205 feet, par three. Basket, you probably can't see too well, but it's off to the left. So we just have to throw down this tight tunnel, let something fade. I could probably make it there with the A5, but it does play a little bit uphill. So I also wanted to just throw the archive on the line that it's meant to be thrown on. Something nice with a little bit of hyzer. So try to carry it straight, hopefully, I don't throw it too hard and end up raising my body up and putting it on Anheuser because uh, it's tough to get a to get a birdie for off on the right side there. Oh, 
Oh, hey, that kicked right towards the basket at least. I thought that was funny, I didn't even see what tree I kicked. All right, so I guess I hit this tree here on the right, kicked it over a little short. Head oh my God, so windy. Look at this. Woo, there it goes. Headwind putt. Let's go. Gave it, <laughs> gave it the right speed. I was, I was like, I don't want to juice this one and go wave over the basket. Hole seven is 246 feet, par three. Plays pretty uphill though, so a little bit further than that. And we have a stiff headwind coming in here. So the smart play would be to go with the, uh, the F2, whatever we're gonna call that, that prototype fairway. I think I can make it there, but we haven't gotten to throw the X3 Gothic edition. This disc looks sweet. Uh, I'm gonna throw this because I expect in max weight, it'll hold up to the headwind. Should be good. I'll also throw the X3 that I do bag every now and then as well. This one's uh, 164 grams. So a lightweight version. This one I can actually get a decent flight out of. In this headwind, I expect this to actually have a little bit of a flip. But we're going with max weight first here. Okay. Well, I'm just going to the other pin position over there. No big deal. Dang. <laughs> this one's going to be a disaster. I did yank that one on a little bit of Anheuser. I really need to make sure to just get this hyzer. Go straight at the basket. Yeah, so even with hyzer, that thing is... Yeah, that's actually going to be solid. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Let me try this, this fairway. This actually will be a good test for this disc. How does it hold up to a headwind? Ooh, that's nice and stable. Wow. That is a stable boy. The uh, X3s, both of them had more turn than that. <laughs> so X3 got about pin high, but uh, way to the right. My lightweight X3 is like five feet for the basket. Let's give this a little step putt. Uh, step putt here, got a crosswind right to left. Oh, too high. Or I lied, perfect, <laughs> almost. Let's make this birdie putt. My, it's right by my, my lightweight X3, right here. Man, this was money. <laughs> I always waffle between this X3, lightweight, and my Wave. They both have similar flights. Sometimes I can get more distance with this X3, but it is a little lighter than my Wave even, and it can get squirrely in the wind, but it, it held up to this headwind all right. So, I don't know. Might have to put it back in the bag. Hole eight is a short 158 foot hole basket straight ahead off a little bit to the right. My normal play here is to take like my glitch and just throw a nice gentle turnover. Don't really have that kind of disc. I'm considering doing it with this P model OS, but I'm actually gonna go with the A5 first. Try a little uh, chip forehand. We'll see how it holds up. Like I, I I'd said in a couple other videos, my goal is to try to do some uh, like a forehand every video if possible, just to get some reps in with the forehand. Hopefully you can get a little improvement out of it. Let's see how it goes. Nope, way too wide. Dang it. It was all right, release. Try the P-Bottle OS on a turnover. This, I imagine, is gonna fight out very easily because I don't have to throw it that hard. Yeah, look at that, it's already fighting out. You know, that's got great stability though, great glide. I did not put that much into that and it, it went past the basket really easily. Nice little disc there. Let me show you like real quick, if I just had even my PA3, which already is a little overstable, this should hold the line a lot better. That P model OS, very beefy. Yeah, that's money. Oh no, it's not after that little twiggle branch hit. Circle one still. <laughs> All right, so I got a really awkward putt here. The basket is squared up by a big tree. So I am actually gonna putt with the P model OS here. And my plan is to just sort of, there's a little narrow gap. I'm aiming for that. And then hopefully it has a little fade to get into the basket. Ah, that was a line, just needed a little less height. That was a pretty solid attempt there. <laughs> that hit dead center. A little hyzer kick out. Bogey. 
All right, last hole, hole nine, 245 feet, par three. Basket is straight ahead. We are playing uphill again into the same headwind that we had on a hole seven. Similar distance. I'm gonna go with the X3 again. This is not the disc I would normally go with. I would just go with a, a neutral fairway at this point. Maybe the F3 or F5, honestly. I wanna to try to keep this one like flat and see if it still turns. Cause I know I put Anheuser on that shot on hole seven. I wanna see how it holds up. If I, if I can keep a good angle on it, try to pipe it through the gap here. It turns, it turns. Dang, that was going too. That was a, a big throw. Let's try um, probably a better disc for the wind. This uh, prototype fairway. This one I could put a little flex on even in the head one, I think. Yeah, that's solid. That's uh, 10 feet away from the basket there. So that prototype fairway, five feet from the pin. Should have gone with that, but I'm surprised honestly with how flippy this is. I thought because it's a 12 speed, it would handle this headwind for my lower arm speed a little bit better, but it's got a little flex to it. So we're gonna go, we got a long little throw here into a headwind. Let's see how the P model OS holds up. Uh, I know the A5 would be solid here, but yeah, I want to try out the P model OS and I, I, might, I might also throw the PX3 as well, just little chips here. See how they compare stability wise for, this is sort of where I would throw the, all of these anyway. So here we go. Woo, that was money. All right, let's try to see how the PX3 flies compared to that. That was a sick little approach there with the P model OS. Pretty similar, similar results. A5, let's give this one a real run. Oh, love all of those, honestly. <laughs> all right, so all my approaches, easy tap-ins here, P Model OS, PX3, A5, gave it a little run, past the basket. The uh, prototype fairway, really nice little flex, held the line a good bit, especially in the headwind. I was worried when I threw it, I didn't put enough angle on it. If there was no wind, I think I was gonna hit that tree on the left. But luckily the headwind kept it turned over. Park job, look at this. Easy birdie. But uh, unfortunately we're tapping out pars. But can't complain about that. Pretty solid round. Okay, so bonus hole here, hole 10. You can see, I don't know the distance. Downhill, pin is straight ahead there. I'm actually not aiming for that. I just want to test out the X3 on, not a headwind, we have a tailwind this time. We're going the opposite direction. So I want to see if I throw this down this tunnel, is it gonna have a nice strong fade or what? But let's see what happens. Just give it a nice rip. This disc is money. This disc is money. I might need to bag this disc. My, oh, let me try this. Let's try this lightweight one again. Yeah, a little more flip on that one. Still solid though. Whew, similar spots, hole 16 here. It's a par four, wide open shot. I have no clue the distance again. This will be the test for this X3 and this X3. Normally my go-to throw here is uh, throwing a wave as hard as I can. They chop down the tree on the right. So this actually is an easier shot now, but my goal would be to shoot between, basically just get it past the trees. I normally on a good shot would maybe get 20 feet past those trees. So let's see if we can get the same distance or even further with this X3, that is gonna be a strong consideration of going in the bag. So we're gonna go with the uh, 500 Spectrum first. I'm gonna throw the Spectrum Air as well. Let's see how it goes. Okay, a little short there. So maybe the wave is gonna keep its spot in the bag. We'll see though, X3 uh, Air Spectrum here. Maybe the wave is gonna lose its spot in the bag. <laughs> that was money. <laughs> all right, I am all finished up testing out these discs in the Prodigy Club subscription box. Overall, 
I've been loving these subscription boxes. I've only gotten two of them so far, but both of them have been a lot of fun with some really interesting discs. The clothing has been awesome as well. I really like this hoodie. Starting off here with the P Model OS. This was a disc I didn't think I was actually gonna like that much. Again, I haven't had too much experience using the Ace line of discs here, but this P Model OS has a really nice flight. I could throw it on hyzer and it just has a nice arcing hyzer the entire flight. Throwing it flat, same thing. It just goes straight, then a nice, gentle arcing hyzer all the way through the flight. So really dependable. I feel like I could probably trust this in the wind as well. I don't think I'm gonna be bagging this. I don't really have a need for like a super overstable putter. I find my PA3 to be overstable enough if I want just a nice little putter shot or I'll go to something like my A5. Speaking of the A5, this crystal A5 is money. It feels great in the hand and it has a gorgeous flight. Nice and straight for most of the flight, but then a very strong overstable finish. I did find for forehands, it definitely carries a lot straighter than I want it to be. My forehands are just all out of whack anyway, so take that with a grain of salt. But this crystal ball A5 feels so good in the hand. The plastic is nice and grippy, nice and gummy as well. It feels great. I normally bag a 300 plastic A5 and I, just recorded a video while I was out in Texas, a little casual round using my normal discs, and I accidentally left my A5 at hole 18. Really upset about that. I do have backups, but now I'm wondering, since I had to replace one anyway, do I just put this in the bag? Because I really enjoyed throwing this. All right, moving on up to the mid-range, the archive, just like I thought was gonna happen. I really wanna put this back in the bag. I really do like the archive for how versatile it is. It definitely has a nice overstable finish, but it's not a crazy dumpy overstable mid-range. It's no MX-1, that's for sure. It's definitely less overstable than say my Matrix, which is my current overstable mid-range, but it is more overstable than my Hex. So I'm sort of torn because now that I have a smaller bag, I have to sort of limit each disc slot. So right now, I think it's better for me to keep the Matrix and the Hex combo it just has a little bit more variance between the two discs. Zelda going crazy. What are you doing? But I don't know. I really do like throwing the archive and that feels great in the hand. This Testron plastic with a little bit of glimmer looks gorgeous. Feels great. I don't know. I have no clue. I'm sort of going through like a mid bag crisis is what I'm calling it because there are so many disc slots where I just don't know which one I want to solidify as my disc in the bag. I mentioned this in some other videos that I recorded recently. I'm planning on doing sort of like a bag battle series where I take a bunch of discs that fly similarly, pit them against each other. And we'll see which one makes the bag. So Archive is definitely a contender for that overstable mid-range slot. Fairway driver here, the prototype Prodigy Club Fairway, as of right now, unnamed, and it is quite overstable. I definitely initially thought it was going to be understable looking at the profile, but it's just a domey overstable disc. And it has a great flight, very dependable in the wind. I was able to throw it into a headwind quite well. I really like this disc. However, I do not think this one is going to be making the bag. And I don't really think it's a contender to as well because it flies a bit similar to say my Vela or my Resistor, which are my sort of overstable low speed fairway drivers but both of those are significantly shallower feeling in the hand and less domey. And I really prefer that shallower flat feel in all of my fairway drivers. That's really the only reason why this would not make my bag. It has a great flight, but I definitely prefer the hand feel of both the Vela and the Resistor over this one. All right, and the last disc here, the disc that honestly surprised me the most is this Gothic 500 Spectrum X3. I definitely thought this was gonna just be a pure meat hook because I do not really have the arm speed to handle 12 speed discs, but I was getting some really nice flights out of this into a headwind. It flipped over a lot more than I expected. I actually was throwing this into a headwind thinking that because it's a 12 speed and my arms, I'm not throwing it up to speed. It would just carry straight and then have a nice dependable fade, but I was getting a good amount of turn on this. And I actually have a couple of other shots off camera where I was like throwing this on some like turnover lines. It was holding them pretty well. I had some really nice gap hits with this disc. And then we had those big bomber holes at the end where I was throwing this a couple times as well and getting some really good distance out of it. I might consider putting this X3 in the bag along with 
my X3 in air spectrum plastic because I think that sort of a, they're sort of a good complement to each other. I don't know. This is another disc that I'm gonna have to sort of workshop a bit to see because one of my only distance drivers in the bag right now is my Vision Wave, which is also a lightweight driver. And that disc really gets me a good amount of distance. It's significantly more understable and it's also only 11 speed. It definitely gets a little bit straighter flight for me. And I actually am able to get some nice turnovers out of the Wave as well. So I might have to do a little comparison. This might have to be one of those bag battles. Now that I have a smaller bag, it's much harder to figure out like which discs to keep in. I have a severe case of FOMO. Ah, oh, so annoying, but <laughs> super fun testing out these discs. I really love these. Prodigy Club subscription boxes so far. Looking forward to next quarters as well. That is going to be it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't, I would greatly appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to the channel. If you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and ring that notification bell so you can be notified when our next episode comes out. Until next time, guys, cheers.